In this video, I'm going to go over Illustrator CS6 and show you how to change the appearance. Right now, I have CS5 open so you can see what CS5 looks like. When you first open CS6, I have CS6 open right here. This is what CS6 looks like. So many people may want to change the background appearance to appear like CS5. Here's how you do that. You click on Illustrator, the word Illustrator at the top left. Go down to Preferences. And in Preferences, you go down to User Interface. I'm going to also go over these other settings in this video as well in a little bit more detail. Um, you have the Brightness setting right here. This is for the whole user interface. You can make it dark. You can make it medium dark, which is default, medium light, or light, which would make it look more like Illustrator CS5, CS4, and so on. You can also use this slider to slide to a custom color. So, of course, like I say, um, medium dark is the default setting for Illustrator. You can also change the canvas cover color, excuse me, which is the canvas and the artboard um, to white. So you can change that to white if you prefer. Um, having a clean background right there. The default color is match user interface brightness. And you can um, make a few other change changes as well in there. So now I'm going to go through the other sections of this preferences dialog box. If you have your own computer, if you have your own program, it's good to adjust these for whatever you're working on. Um, for example, if you use the arrow keys, sometimes you want the arrow keys to move an item, an object, a path a lot. Sometimes you want it to move it just in small increments. You can control that by adjusting the keyboard increment that will adjust the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if you want it to move two points, you can change that to two points. If you want to change it to half a point, you can do that. Um, you can change some other settings in here, and you can um, read through those as well. But I think that's the biggest one right there. You can change your corner radius. That's another slightly big one I guess you could adjust. Next section, um, selection and anchor display. So for your selection, if you want to adjust that or if you want it to snap to a point even tighter you can adjust that right here anchor points if you want them to appear differently you can have the anchor points appear as squares as circles and so on the default is the far right setting under type you can change your size and letting um, increments once again the preset increments is two points if you want to change that to be smaller or larger increments you can change that right there tracking increments is 20 points and a baseline shift is two points. All adjustable within this preferences panel. It's kind of getting into the guts of Illustrator. Under units, you can change this to inches, picas, points, centimeters, pixels, whatever you work in the most. So if you're on a metric scale, centimeters or millimeters is probably for you. If you're working in English units, inches would be good. Um, if you're working on a book or something and using picas or points, that would be applicable. Uh, of course, pixels works quite well with Photoshop. Guides and grid, um, you can change those colors. So this is really handy. If you're working on a project that has a lot of cyan in it, you probably don't want your guides to ha be cyan. So you can change the colors right there. There's a, some presets in this drop-down box. Or you can click on this square and change it to a very, very precisely chosen color. You have other uh, options to choose your selection by as well. You can have the, the guides as lines as they are by default or you can change those to be dots right there as dots. Um, same is true for grid. You can change the color. The default color of the background grid is gray. If you want to change that, you can change it to whatever color you want. You can have it as lines or dots as well. Grid line by default is every 72 points and subdivisions are every inch or eight. eight there's eight divisions. Um, so you can um, adjust that as well. There's actually eight small subdivisions with any, every big division. So that's adjustable as well. Um, smart guides are by default green. Sometimes the smart guides can get on your nerves. They can be a little much. So if you want to turn off some smart guide functions, you can do that. For example, if you don't want to see object highlighting, every time you hover over an object, it will highlight in green. Um, you can turn that off. Of course, you can turn off the colors the same way, or change the colors, excuse me, the same way 
and you can change those other settings that are labeled there as well. So that can be handy. Um, by default, it will show you 90 and 45 degree angles. If you want to see a different custom angle, you can type in a custom angle for it to show you um, as well. That can be very handy and take a lot of measuring out of your design work. Slices are red. It usually shows the slice numbers. If you don't want to see that, or if you want to change the color of the slices, you can do that. If you have other dictionaries, you can upload those there. Um, scratch disk and plugins are located here if you have those as well. Skip it down to file handling and clipboard. Those settings are right there if you need to adjust them. And I will have further videos if needed on more details in these. I'm just kind of giving an overview. And the appearance of black you can adjust as well on screen. Um, if you want it to really appear accurately, you can change it to be ac more accurate to print. So right now, um, black is set as rich black, so it's a little darker than it will actually print. So if you want to change that to be more realistic, that's a good idea in many cases. So that's, that's Illustrator CS6. The first look, there was CS5, if you remember that. And so we're going into CS6 now, so I look forward to working with it in the future.